My mama was a Sunday school teacher. I know a lot about the Bible. I just don't know what nothing is. I can give you five, six scriptures. That's all I know. But I know five, six good ones, though. Them five, six got me here today. I'm going to give you two of them right now. You know the biggest scripture that changed my life? You have not because you ask not. I can't even tell you how big that is. This is the coldest thing I'm going to tell you today. You have not because you ask not. Most people don't have the life of their dreams because you ain't never asked God could you have it. You've been trying to do it yourself. You've been trying to figure it out for yourself how that's been working out for you. I just told you earlier you can't figure it out. Ain't no scripture nowhere tell you to figure it out. What you trying to figure your life out for? You ain't got nothing to do with tomorrow. You can't change the past. So what you tripping with your life for? You have not because you ask not. Most people ain't rich today because you ain't never asked God could you be rich. I ask God every day at the lowest point of my life. I ask God every day could I be rich because I had had it up to here with being poor. I lived in a car, dog. I ain't had no backyard. I ain't had no TV. I ain't had no phone. I ain't got no sink. I ask God every day, could I be rich? So I cut a deal with it. I told God, if you let me make it, when I get there, I'm going to tell everybody it was you. Here I am. And it was him. Now you got another route you want to take? Go ahead. See, the thing about having faith is you don't need nobody's permission. You don't have to get accepted into the course. You ain't got to clear it with nobody. He's available. I got rich, and I'm not bragging, but I'm just telling you, I got rich because I asked. She asked me today, she said, uh, is there anything about you that we don't know? I was at the doctor's office the other day. On the medical form, they say, are you allergic to anything? And I didn't check no block. But the nurse always go over everything to make sure. Mr. Harvey, are you allergic to anything? I said, yes. She said, we just not checked in the block. I said, because y'all probably ain't got that in here. Are you allergic to anything? I said, yes. She said, you didn't check the block. I said, because y'all ain't probably got that in here. She said, sir, we have every medication known to man in here. I said, oh, I thought you just asked me why I'm allergic to something. I'm not allergic to medicine. She said, what you allergic to? I said, poverty. When Dr. Norman Vincent Peale spoke, he gave me goose pimples. When Earl Nightingale said, all of us are self-made, but only the successful will admit it. Mr. Sadursky. Yeah. Mr. Sadursky, family that we work for in Miami Beach, he did not know why I spent so much time shining his shoes because he listened to the strangest secret in the world. As he was playing those tapes called Lead the Field, I was hearing these things, and then when I shined, he said, well, that's good enough. I said, well, let me dust, let me, oh, but well, look at the books are crooked. Let me, and I went in there early and messed them up so I could still, <laughs> because I wanted to be in there while he was taking this time. He was a multimillionaire. My dream and vision was one day, I'm going to be a millionaire like Mr. Sadursky. One day, because I was young, and I was young and ignorant. I didn't know I couldn't do it. I didn't know I couldn't have a mansion. I was like the bumblebee. The bumblebee isn't supposed to fly because the body is too large to be held up by his little puny wings. But the bumblebee doesn't know it. It's intelligently ignorant. So it keeps on flying anyhow. This lady came to the well beaten down, unworthy, thinking that she would always be looked down on, defeated. But she left that day with a new passion, a new self-image. She saw herself as valuable, redeemed, forgiven. She ran back and told the whole town to come see this man, Jesus. They all flooded out to see him. She didn't just get changed, but she changed her city. Now she was no longer looked down on. She had respect. She was no longer broken, unworthy. She felt valuable. She knew she was a child of the Most High God. What's interesting is Samaria wasn't the shortest route from Judea to Galilee. There was a quicker way, but Jesus said, I must go through Samaria. I can hear the disciples saying, Jesus, that's a long way. It's hot. We're already tired. Let's take the shortcut. 
Jesus said, no, there's a woman there I need to see. Someone that's made mistakes, someone that's off course, someone that's been rejected, that feels forgotten about. I have to tell her what I'm about to do. This woman came from a culture that worshiped idols. Their gods were made out of stone, no life, no response. Jesus showed up and said, I'm going to give you living water. They were used to dead gods. He said, I'm the Messiah, I'm the living God. You may have some big obstacles. You don't see how you can overcome the sickness, how you can break the addiction, how you can accomplish your dream. But if you only knew who our God is, he's not a weak, lifeless, limited God that used to live, a statue that we can reverence. Our God is alive. He still parts red seas. He still brings dead things back to life. He still protects in the fiery furnace. He still makes rivers out of deserts. He still brings walls down. He still defeats giants. He still breaks chains in the midnight hour. He's still a way maker, a promise keeper, a miracle worker. Like this woman, life may have thrown you a curve. You've settled where you are, thinking this is as good as it gets. Just live with the addiction. Just accept those bad breaks limited you. That person that walked away soured your life. God is saying, if you only knew what I'm about to do, I'm about to promote you in the pandemic. I'm about to honor you in front of your enemies. I'm about to heal you despite what the report says. I'm about to free you from what looks permanent. I'm about to bring someone into your life better than you've imagined. If you only knew what God was up to, you'd get your fire back. Those bad breaks didn't stop your purpose. The mistakes you made didn't cancel your destiny. You're about to see God show out in your life. My father went through a great disappointment. He was married at a young age, and unfortunately, the marriage didn't work out. Denominational leaders told him that he would never pastor again, that that failure had disqualified him. He eventually left his church and started selling insurance. He was very down on himself, living condemned, thinking that he had seen his best days. But the same God that came to the well for that woman that was broken and lonely came to my father. Daddy thought it was all downhill, that he would never pastor, never be in ministry, never have a family. But God said, if you only knew what I'm going to do, if you only knew you're going to meet Dolores Pilgrim, a young nursing student, and fall in love. If you only knew you're going to have four average children and one exceptional child. If you only knew you're going to pastor Lakewood and have influence around the world, you wouldn't live defeated down on yourself because of mistakes, no passion because of those bad breaks. See, we get stuck in the heartache, the disappointment, the guilt, the shame. I should have done better. What was wrong with me? God knows we're human. Quit being so hard on yourself. Your mistakes didn't stop what God has planned for your life. You're not that powerful. If you could stop your destiny, none of us would make it. Abraham made a mistake, had a baby out of wedlock. That didn't stop the promised child. He's called the father of our faith. If he made mistakes and didn't miss his purpose, then you shouldn't beat yourself up because you've made mistakes. Now, I'm not saying about being loose and doing whatever you want, but when your heart is to please God, when down deep you want to do the right thing, but you make mistakes, that is not going to stop your purpose. What will stop you is if you start living condemned, down on yourself, no passion, that's why Jesus showed up and said to this woman, if you only knew what I'm about to do, if you only knew the gift I have for you, if you only knew who you are talking to, he was saying, I'm not just anyone. I'm the God who spoke worlds into existence. I'm the God who flung stars into space. I'm the God that crowned you with favor, that planned out your days for good. Jesus spoke faith into this lady. He could have condemned her. You're getting what you deserve. Too bad. It's just life. No, he said, get ready. I'm about to do something awesome in your life. You may have had your share of setbacks. You can come up with good reasons why you can't be happy, why you can't get married, why your business can't succeed. In your own strength, that may be true, but you're not on your own. The God who breathed life into you is saying, if you only knew the doors I'm about to open, if you only knew the favor I'm about to show you, if you only knew how I'm going to connect the dots, those things you don't understand that were painful, that weren't fair, I saw them and they're going to all work for your good. They're leading you to an amazing future, to something better than you've imagined.